webinar is all about. By the way, thank, welcome Barbie and thank you so much for, for accepting our invitation. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you um, Gladys, and thank you to the MBIA for providing uh, me with this opportunity to share our personal, our very personal story um, and experience with uh, pediatric traumatic brain injury. Um, uh, my name is Barbie Nault, and I, I, I am a case manager by education uh, with uh, extensive experience in uh, rehab, case management, and return to work programs following disability. But um, my most important role in life is being a mom and a caregiver to uh, our youngest daughter, Danica, who was involved in a very serious motor vehicle accident back in 2011 and that is what has changed our entire life not just for her i mean especially for danica but as well for our entire family so i've decided just to um have a powerpoint that i'm going to jump through quickly but it's mostly just so that it will remain focused and kind of share the chain of events and the challenges that we've experienced as primary caregivers to our daughter and hopefully our experience um, may be similar to other people and, and some of what we have gone through and being advocates for her might be helpful to uh, your journey with, uh, with traumatic brain injury. So I, if you can just bear with me, I'm just gonna jump to uh, the slide. Sorry, just there we go. Can everybody see that on on their screens? Okay. So once again, I just want to thank um, MBIA for providing this opportunity to share our personal story, um, and I'll just start by sharing the details about. Danica's injury, that's her youngest daughter who uh, su sustained a, a severe traumatic brain injury in a car accident. And then um, talk about the treatment, the rehab, her journey since the accident, um, the symptoms, the challenges, the strategies that have worked for us to support her with her journey with TBI and as well as our family. And most importantly, kind of the importance of, of advocacy and what has what has and what hasn't worked for for us along this uh, this long road. So on October 8th of 2011, three members of our family were involved in a very serious motor vehicle accident. It was the result of um, of a storm the day before, which um, had knocked down a dead end sign. And um, the accident occurred uh, when it was just starting to get dark. So um, the driver, uh, I'm just keeping our family protected because it is a, it, it's a very traumatic event for our whole family. So what resulted because the dead end sign was knocked down was um, the vehicle plunged I head first into a very deep ditch and um, consequently it was basically a head-on collision with um, plunging into the ditch and the impact of hitting the ditch head-on. So the driver and the passenger lives were saved by the airbags. Um, I can't even imagine the trauma that they continue to live with because they had to administer first aid and call the police and ambulance and the first responders when they were in a state of, of shock. So the impact of this day is forever ingrained in our family because it is not, it's, it's not only affected Danica, but it's had also um, a direct impact to other members of our family. So 
our baby, that's Danica. Um, she was 12 at the time of the accident. She was in the back seat with seat belted, but due to the fact how the vehicle plunged over um, and the impact it call it, 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 she ended up suffering uh, a severe traumatic brain injury and her head hit the front and the back. So it's a, what's called a contra coup, contra coup injury. Um, she suffered diffuse brain damage, meaning that there was brain damage very widespread to um, her entire brain. There was brain bleeds. She fractured her skull, um, suffered a laminar and basilar fracture, which is a, a fracture at the base of her skull. There she suffered um, contusions of her lungs and also to her spleen. And she also fractured her her, um, her her neck, her C2 spine. And we were told that if it was a little bit over to one side, she she would not be able to walk or and it, there would have been a complete sever. So, um, Again, this is it's miraculous her survival and how um, how she has managed to come out of um, the the effects of this accident. Um, she was rushed to Health Science Center Children's Hospital, unresponsive and unconscious, and she was in critical condition. She was placed in a medically induced coma and was on life support from October 8th till October 30th. There really are no words to describe the emotions and pain that our family went through during this time. And I'm sure um, all of you as, you know, either brain injury survivors yourselves or as family members can relate to the pain that occurs when an accident like that happens and the shock and the emotions that take place. Um, so basically HSC became our home for the next number of months. We did not leave the hospital and we needed to be by her side and support her unconditionally during this, this time. Um, during her stay, she injured numerous complications and by October 17th, her uh, brain injury and injuries became very complicated to, uh, to the extent that the medical team prepared us for the worst because her brain, uh, her intracranial pressures, her brain pressures were um, extremely high. And um, we, we, there was a priest who came to give her basically um, the last blessings. Uh, we were absolutely being prepared for what no family wants to, to go through and being told that you, know, you're, you may lose your daughter. And that's where, um, this, that's where her symptoms were, were heading was that it was so serious. So um, they indicated that, you know, her heart rate was dropping at one point. It was down to 30 beats per minute and her blood pressure increased. We're talking about a 12 year old girl and her blood pressure increased to 223 over 113, which is extremely high. A normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. So, um, as a family, we needed to make a decision regarding our daughter's life. Uh, the neurosurgeon and his team uh, connected with us and they basically told us that we had 45 minutes to make a decision regarding um, whether we wanted to proceed with a surgery, which is basically a decompressive craniotomy. He indicated that there was no scientific evidence to indicate that this would save her life, but it was really a last stitch effort if we wanted to proceed with that. Um, they prepared us for the worst that from not surviving this to be severely disabled, um, you know, 
likely uh, St. Amant bound. And we basically said that she was fighting and we were not giving up on Danica. So we pursued the, the option of the urgent craniotomy to, uh, with the hope that that would relieve the, the pressure and the swelling of her brain. Um, it was, I, I, I can't even begin to describe the, the difficulty and the emotion and the fear um, that, that, was, that we were going through as a family. Um, this was our baby and had it not been for the support and prayers of family and community, I honestly don't know how we would have got through it because it was, it was through that that we managed to survive that, that day. Um, our daughter did survive the surgery. Um, however, um, after the surgery, there was another, you know, a, another road ahead of complication after complication, including infections. She, because she was on a ventilator, she was, uh, she was, she was. There were so many machines keeping her alive. She, that, that's that's the only thing that was keeping her alive were were the machines. Um, she was having fever. She still continued to have um, high blood pressure. She was having renal issues. Um, she, prior to her injury, she was a, a very active adolescent, a very active 12 year old. She was playing double A ringette at the time. And basically we were told that because she was in such wonderful shape, her physical shape um, is likely what helped her to survive. And um, she became she became known as as HSC's little miracle. And um, the neurosurgeon and his team they told us that her survival was miraculous. That there was no science to explain how she survived based on her her symptoms. And I would just like to point out that you know as living with COVID right now and how we're so grateful to the frontline workers for the work that they're doing today during this crisis. We are so grateful forever to the frontline workers because it's because of them and their expertise and their compassion that we have our, our daughter. Um, Danica eventually transitioned to the rehab unit at HSC and spent the next month and a half um, coming out of her coma, which is really difficult to see um, her emerging from it. I mean, of course we were um, so grateful, but it was very difficult and emotional to see your child coming out of uh, something like that. She was extremely agitated, kicking, and um, it's uh, honestly, um, her brain did not stop. She did not sleep for about four days, and she was constantly talking, and you could just see that her brain was trying to rewire itself. She was saying things like, you know, coach, put on my skates, tie up my skates. She was um, you know, have a practice at Oak Bank. She was saying things so you could just see her trying to, uh, that her brain was trying to rewire itself. And um, she also required constant supervision because she was trying to pull out her feeding tube and, and um, trying to, you know, it was dangerous for her because she was so agitated. So we had to worry, you know, make sure she wasn't falling out of bed and and things like that. So um, again, we did not leave her at any time. We lived at HSC and um, we made sure that we were included in every step of the, of the process. And as she continued to progress, 
Uh, she had to learn how to swallow again, how to walk, how to talk, how to read, how to write, all the activities that, you know, we, we take for granted that you just, you know, in, a, in an instant, those things are taken away. And um, it certainly was a journey to, uh, to get all of those, those qualities back again. Um, on November 22nd, when she had stabilized, she, uh, they did a lot of testing and she was deemed medically fit to um, undergo her second brain surgery to um, replace the bone that, that, that had been removed from her skull. Um, that's called a decompressive craniotomy. Uh, so she underwent the surgery to put that back in her uh, in her head and, and titanium plates um, were inserted to protect her brain. So she has plates in her uh, plates and screws holding everything together. Um, we were still in the hospital and uh, she underwent a very uh, rigid uh, therapy program, which included, you know, daily physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, and then ongoing medical assessments. Um, my husband and I made sure that we were part of every process at the hospital every day. They had what's called the the grant the daily rounds, where they have meetings about each pace each patient. And so we made sure that we were part of that and we asked questions and, you know, I think that was the very first step in becoming true advocates for our daughter was to learn as much about the injury and the subsequent impact um, of where she was at at that time and then what we could expect going forward. Um, so we, the knowledge that was the first step was to is acquire as much knowledge as possible so that we could understand and provide her with appropriate care and, and treatment. Um, uh, in December, we were so blessed to have our baby home just before Christmas. Um, I can't even begin to describe what that felt like to see her have overcome the most challenging tragedy that a young child can go through and then a family. Um, it's, it's heartbreaking and you know all your hopes and dreams that you had for your daughter now you you adapt to a new reality and so for the next year um Danica participated in therapy um, that included uh, again physio occupational therapy speech therapy the regular medical evaluations tutoring and it was a very slow and structured um, return to work plan. Uh, I want to share that, you know, my husband and I are so fortunate because we have wonderful employers with benefits and, you know, we were very blessed to, um, my husband was able to be off work for five months and then he worked 50% for another four months and I was off work. I had sick leave for a full year so that we could be part of our daughter's um, therapy. And as a caregiver, I just don't know how, um, I, I just can't imagine for people who don't have um, those types of benefits or privilege with their employers to be able to navigate the system. So we do recognize that we were in such a fortunate position to be able to um, have an opportunity to be there with our daughter and advocate on her behalf. You know, when your child is impacted, 
it's personal, it's emotional, it's gut wrenching, and it's the most difficult challenge that any parent and families can face. And when your child's life is altered under such traumatic circumstances, it's uh, it's been a, a roller coaster of experiencing feelings from grief to immense gratitude, and you know feelings in the middle as well. We've experienced them all. We are we're nine years, almost nine years into this journey, and. Honestly, most of it has just been uh, survival mode. Um, I can tell you that, you know, once you leave the hospital and time elapses, you really start to feel the, the challenges of, you know, the social isolation, the loss of friendships. And that was heart wrenching because as a 12 year old kid, to see that, you know, she's lost some amazing friends and, you know, just because she, you know, there was changes in the way she was, her personality, and um, she was a very popular kid, a very active kid, and it was heart-wrenching to see um, the losses that became, you know, increasingly evident she was no longer able to, she wasn't connected to her ringette community. And, and this is a kid who played ringette since the time she was four years old. Her, her very best friends abandoned her. And um, so our, we also, uh, our family roles completely changed. Um, as parents, we became her everything. Uh, her exterior brain, we were extremely overprotective. Um, we were putting out fires because of, you know, her angry outbursts. Um, it really, we were in damage control mode all the time. There was not a day that didn't go by that we weren't dealing with issues, you know, with the siblings because she also has um, four siblings. So that was difficult. Um, we were very lucky in, in one sense because Danica is the baby. So she had the benefit of mature siblings that were able to take on um, responsibilities at home that we needed a lot of help with. And, you know, they could also help us with Danica. I honestly can't imagine if we had younger kids what, um, what that could have looked like, uh, you know, uh, just navigating the home was difficult with you know the number of people living at home and the noise and the lights and uh her fatigue so it was uh there was a number of challenges that we that we had to start coping with and and us you know educate everybody in our family about our new reality we were also dealing with respite issues uh, again, the the number of medical appointments was and and the paperwork dealing with the systems that we were involved with was overwhelming. We don't live in Winnipeg. We live in a small rural community, which made it even more difficult to have access to services. So that was another challenge and and barrier. And let's face it, when you're thrown into the world of brain injury, there's no recipe or, or playbook. I mean, no two brain injuries are are the same. And so you it's you you just have to learn and and work with trial and error and understanding and, and what works best. And it's 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 a process. It it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Um, I think one of the frustrations that we really had as parents was that people really didn't understand, um, you know, we kept hearing things like, oh, you know, she'll be okay. She was 12. She's a young brain. She's going to recover. She's going to, you know, make a full recovery. She looks great. She's walking. You know, you're so lucky that you have her. 
yes, absolutely, we are blessed that she survived that. But a lot of people don't understand um, specifics when it comes to pediatric brain injury. And that when you're talking about a developing brain, the younger you are, the more serious the impact. Because the brain has three major periods of development and that's in infancy, childhood and adolescence. And they're all periods of immense growth and changes. And people with brain injury, they will, who suffer a brain injury, they will maintain all of their prior knowledge. So the younger you are, when an injury occurs, you're going to have limited knowledge and experience to draw upon. So recovery for children with brain injury is, is very difficult and it is ongoing and unpredictable. So that's one thing that I've been or our family has been is uh, constantly educating people about um, children who sustain traumatic brain injury and the impact and where they're at in development and um, you know pediatric brain injury is a uh, it's a chronic disease and a child's brain con continues to grow and develop until 25 years of age. So if there's an injury prior to that, it, it, you're going to be suffering uh, long-term deficits and permanent deficits will continue to emerge for years to, to come. So in terms of, and I, I'm not going to go too much into this, I'm sure everybody uh, who's listening to this can relate to the symptoms that you see, but um, this was our new reality is what we had to learn is, you know, our, I'm not an expert in brain injury, but I'm an expert in my daughter and what she was like before her injury and how she was after her injury and it's indescribable really um, the challenges that have resulted subsequent to um, the severe traumatic brain injury um, the mood swings the irritability the physical aggression at times, the, um, her need for sleep is incredible. And people just don't understand that, you know, when she says I'm tired or, you know, people think, well, I'm tired too, but it's not the same. It's not the same type of fatigue. It is complete exhaustion. And, you know, it depends on, you know, her environment, what she's had to deal with. Um, she can't focus for long periods of time. It completely exhausts her. So we have to, we had to find ways to ensure that we are setting our daughter up for success. And, um, you know, with her, the, the majority of the damage occurred in her frontal lobe. So what we see in terms of, um, most of her challenge are with the what they call the executive function and so her difficulties are a lot with organizing her day uh, self-regulation her memory her short-term memory her long-term memory is incredible it's the short-term memory you know the inappropriate behavior um the process processing of information. I mean, when we watch TV, it is frequently, we have to rewind, start it over again, because she just can't process the information at the same speed that, that we do. And um, sometimes she becomes very stuck with her ideas and um, uh, her ability to, to function in social situations, uh, her attention deficits, you know, she lost her sense of smell. Um, when she's tired, you can see that there's, uh, she has a lot of difficulty on her 
her left side, she has left sided weakness. Um, and there's a difference between a female brain injury and a male a brain injury. And um, I would have to say that, um, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of vulnerability there uh, with a brain injury period, but um, we always need to ensure that um, we are there to help with her decisions and that she is safe and protected at all times. Um, some of the strategies that we have found to work for us as a family is um, we educate. We consistently educate our family, uh, caregivers who are involved with working with Danica. Um, it has been uh, our passion now because we live it and I mean when any you know when any family deals with a tragedy whether it's you know a family member dealing with cancer or a brain injury or child becoming sick it's natural to become an advocate and so as a result of our daughter's traumatic brain injury we are now passionate about um, sharing our experience, hoping that um, maybe it will make a difference and help other people in the same situation. Um, so in terms of strategies that have worked for us, you know, um, we make sure we monitor her fatigue levels. Um, we try and make sure that, you know, she has a, a really good diet exercise as tolerated you know we're not going to force exercise on her that's going to depend certainly it's important but again we have to keep in mind how she's doing there's a great program love your brain yoga and again because we don't live in winnipeg um we don't have access we read a, you know uh, ready access to to be able to drive back and forth to all these but love your brain has online um, yoga programs that have been great for her brain injury. Um, we, one of the issues that is a key issue for us is always making sure that she is supervised and um, is safe. Uh, I think the key for us is making sure that her environment is, is controlled. We, you know, we have goal setting, you know, daily, weekly, short term, long term. She's in charge. We ask her, you know, what would you like to do today? What are your goals? And we do our best to try to assist her. Um, I mean, she's at the center of everything. We want to empower her. We want to encourage as much um, independence as possible. Um, and she does quite well when the env environment is controlled and we find that, you know, it's when you go on, you know, outings that that's when the issues really um, evolve and that's what friends and people don't understand. So, you know, if we have a family wedding or, or family activities, we've educated our family to say, we're not going to be there for four hours. We may be there for an hour or two hours and then we need to go because it's not going to be, it's not going to be good. It's not going to set her up for success. And um, it, it could just affect how, you know, she behaves and have an impact on her for the next couple of days or, or even up to a week. So we find that the key to success is the controlling the environment. Um, sorry, I'm jumping here. I'm almost at the end here. Um, in terms of, you know, the impact of brain injury, it has impacted our daughter the most, absolutely. But I, it goes without saying that there's gonna be a huge impact to the family as well, because you're all living with brain injury and your roles have changed. And as, Caregivers, we can't manage all the duties. So, you know, we've had to make sure that the siblings took on additional roles and responsibilities. And, you know, 
then we have to address, you know, sometimes it leads to resentment, jealousy, um, sadness. Um, we've been very fortunate though, that um, because our kids are now adults, they've, uh, they've, they've been pretty mature about, about it and they understand, you know, they, they saw where she was and the incredible progress that she's made. So, you know, we've just developed um, new family traditions. Everybody has a role to play and everybody has had to adapt. We now have grandchildren and, um, you know, that is another uh, issue is that we have to limit uh, the amount of time that they come over or, you know, that that our daughter has a, a safe place to go because she just can't tolerate the noise. And, uh, you know, sometimes that uh, she gets angry and, and is taking it out on the little ones. And so we have to say, okay, we need to either remove you from the environment or the, the grandbabies need to go. So we've had to um, really take steps to, uh, you know, ad adapt and, uh, we know that uh, our friends have changed. We still love our, our, our old friends, but we need to surround ourselves with life giving and uh, relationships with people who understand. We need positivity, not negativity. Um, counseling has all been part of our journey for everybody. And as well, we've connected with uh, support groups specific to uh, traumatic brain injury, and that has absolutely made a difference. Um, so in terms of advocacy, um, you know, we've had to work with, it's been such a delicate balancing act. And again, I, I my husband and I have been very fortunate because by, my education and training. I am a case manager, so I've been able to deal with all of the medical and the rehab piece of the equation. And my husband is a principal, so he was able to deal with the the school piece and now uh, volunteering through various uh, employment agencies. So it's been a full time job, but we've shared it. And again, I can't imagine people who don't have that, those types of, of resources um, available. Um, so it's really important that as caregivers or people in that role that you have, um, you know, that you connect with your local brain injury association and that you, you know, expand your knowledge and know about services and supports and benefits that are available to you and that you are either able to advocate or have somebody advocate on your behalf. Um, I know that, you know, finding respite workers was a huge issue for us and now we've, um, we've just developed uh, self managed family care. So we use family members to assist us um, just based on our own personal experience and what has worked best for us. Um, there's the huge legal responsibility that comes with a brain injury um, because um, of, you know, in our situation, she's not able to um, make informed decisions in terms of finances and and uh, medical decisions. So we're responsible for that. And it, it's important that people understand the legal responsibilities associated and that you're always acting in good faith and in the best interest of the, the TBI survivor. Um, you know, some uh, we've had to do a number of of, uh, we've had the processes that we've been involved with, you know, in, just include like get, making sure that we have the appropriate authority to act on behalf of our daughter so that we can make sure that we're making, we're the people making the best decisions for her because we're family and we know her best.
Um, again, I think I've pretty well covered this, you know, uh, brain injury. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, families living with traumatic brain injury, it's an intensive period of change, decision making, uh, advocacy and adjustment. Um, you know, make sure you have strategies, a toolkit, know where to access that, um, work together to promote independence and empower the person with TBI, but make sure that their safety and security is paramount. Um, celebrate the milestones and the incredible resiliency of the survivor. Um, I know each year when the, the anniversary of the accident is, is, is uh, it's, it's bittersweet. We grieve, but at the same time, we celebrate how far she has come and we are so blessed to have her. Um, yeah, family is integral to the process of recovery. Like I said, it's taken us nine, nine years to get to this point and um we were in survival mode for for many years and um no two brain injuries are the same and you cannot use a you know what works for one person doesn't mean it's going to work for the next person or the next person you just have to learn you have to know that person you need to develop a relationship with that person and understand their strengths and challenges and work around those uh, accordingly. Um, just to kind of sum up, you know, we are forever grateful to the frontline workers and staff at HSC. We're forever indebted to Ronald McDonald House for giving us a home within the walls of the Health Science Center. And um, now we're becoming part of the Manitoba Brain Injury Association. And through all of these different uh, you know, processes, everything is making a difference in Danica's recovery. And we can't thank you enough. I've um, included some resources that have been very helpful for us. Um, I'm so grateful that Manitoba Brain Injury um, has uh, recently expanded uh, and really evolving with uh, the online support group as recently including the 18 to 30 survivor group. That's been very helpful for our daughter. Um, the Ontario Brain Injury Association has excellent training programs that are online to learn more about brain injury. Um, they have an online caregiver program, which has been uh, really great for, for me as the primary caregiver to, um, to Danica. Um, and I've also participated, taken a lot of their certificate uh, training programs because um, right now, this is my passion. This is, this is my passion. Um, the Brain Injury Association of Canada, they're having their national conference in September. Um, I guess it will all depend on where things are at with COVID. Um, and I've just included some other resources that have been helpful, uh, specific to our situation because they deal with, um, they're specific to youth with brain injury. Dr. Tim Feeney, he, um, He's one of the world's leading practitioners of positive support in brain injury. Dr. Roberta DePompe, uh, her major area of research and interest is with youth with brain injury and the impact on the family system. And the Love Your Brain Yoga has been excellent for Danica because it's safe um, and it's, uh, you know, it's very slow and it's something that she can follow along with and it's very calming. So at this point, 